Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to play Burgmuller's Opus 100 number no. one, Artless Mind Lacandeur. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons if you're looking for one, there's information in the description below. Burgmuller's Opus 100 is my favorite technique book. I have to say a few words about the book. It's for beginners from grade one all the way to grade five level, progressive pieces. So the first one is the easiest. And these are beautiful character pieces that include so many technical challenges and stylistic musical challenges that if you do the whole book or even half of the book, your technique and piano skills are going to improve immensely. It's very enjoyable pieces as well, much nicer than Cherny and many other finger exercises like Hannon, and it teaches you very similar uh, skills and patterns. So in this video, we're going to learn La Candeur, Artless Mind, the first one. First, I'm going to demonstrate it, and then I'm going to talk about the difficulties and how to approach the piece. So as you could hear, the piece is very legato, very kind of almost like a little stream flowing down from a hill. The whole right hand is all about this uh, connected playing and the right hand is actually almost all the way through in a five finger position. So it's almost like a very beautiful five finger exercise. So instead of going, instead of those very basic patterns, this makes it into a beautiful song. Now the piece is in C major, we have no sharps and no flats, and it is in 4-4, four, four, so 4 beats in every bar, and it says Allegro Moderato 152. Now again, Burgmuller's speeds are really fast in this book, but the book is made for beginners, so at grade 1 you would definitely not play it at 152. Even if you play it much smaller, it's more enjoyable and uh, a lot easier for a beginner. Also, I think the melody comes more alive when it's a little bit gentler and slower than 1-5-2. But anyway, that's just uh, about the speed. Now, what we can see in the piece is that the right hand is mostly having the melody and the left hand is supporting the melody with triads or chords. And in the middle section, after the repeat sign, the left hand takes on a little bit of scaling and then the right hand takes it back in the final section. We have a second repeat sign uh, before the end of the piece and there is a first ending and the second ending. I only played the second ending because uh, I wanted to keep it short, but if you play the entire piece, you need to play the first ending the first time and when you play the second time, you're going to play the second ending ignoring the first ending. So going straight from uh, the previous bar to the second ending. The piece is around grade one level, by the way, grade one, grade two, depending on how fast you play it. There's no like absolute difficulty of these pieces. And let's have a look first at the first section and the left hand chords. So we start in a C major position, a C major chord, one, three, five, and then an F major chord, C, F, A, one, two, five, back to C major, a G7, B, F, G, back to C major, a D7, and modulating to the dominant, a G major chord. So we modulated the dominant by the end of the first section. Now these chords seem pretty straightforward. The only thing to watch here is to make sure they are accurate. So all the notes go down together as opposed to and things like that. So lifting up the hand, pressing down, lift, lift, and we're holding them for four counts because they are semi briefs whole notes. Now, obviously, when the melody is in the right hand, the balance is going to be 
uh, dominated by the right hand, the melody has to be a little bit louder than the chords, because otherwise the chords would overpower the right hand melody. Now let's have a look at the right hand, starting in the C major position, this is middle C at the high G, and we start on a skip, so a little bit like a Hanan exercise. So what we notice here is that although it's almost like a five finger exercise, it has a lot of stretches and skips. Now the first skip is here, and when I get to the end of the first bar, I have to connect that C to the high C, and do the same in the F major position, then I put five on the G, and I cross over the two and come back. Now there is a huge slur above this entire first phrase, so the whole thing has to be very connected, very legato all the way through. And as you can see, the melody is falling, so your hand has to follow that melody to, to make a very expressive sound, otherwise it just sounds like... It sounds a little bit choppy and um, kind of like a computer playing it. So you have a downbeat, a drop, And a slight accent on the first and the third beat, which is actually the first note of the of the descending scale. So as you could see, my hand is kind of waving with the melody and following that melody beautifully. And that's what ultimately is going to give you a very nice performance of this piece. If you can lead the melody, follow the melody with your hand and make sure it's very expressive all the way through and you're making sense of that melody is going somewhere. Now when we uh, put the two hands together, the left hand is just holding, but when the left hand is lifting up and changing the chord, make sure the right hand doesn't lift up like this. Because I saw things like that before. So you want to connect that right hand. Now lift and connect. Crescendo. And end of the first phrase. So that's basically the, the first phrase and this technique and expression applies to the rest of the piece. Now if you play your chords too loud, you're going to overpower the right hand like this. that's not very pretty because we don't need to hear those bass chords so loud, especially because they're very close position chords. Now going to the middle section, the left hand takes on the quaver motion, the eighth notes, and we're going to do a little bit of contrary motion. So starting five on the G, five on the F, and the hands are mirroring each other. And again, see I'm moving inwards with my hands. Then left hand comes up. Now same again, but quietly. And now we have double voicing, holding down the G and A. So I'm not releasing this G until I play all three quavers. And then a C major chord. G7. And it says dolce e poco ritenuto, so slowing down a little bit and very sweetly. So you can slow down there a bit and just take it a little bit slower after the big sforzato sign. And then you get to the end of this first repeat. You go back. And when you get to the second time to the G7 chord, you carry on to the second ending. And here we have the A flat and back to C. A flat. And C major. Left hand jumping to the bass clef. 
slowing down and quieting down, tying in the G and pianissimo. So lots of dynamics besides the legato and leading the melody and the balance between the chords and the notes. We have a lot of dynamics marks, forte, piano, dolce, poco ritenuto, a tempo. So you need to be aware of all these little indications by the composer in order to perform it in a very nice manner because otherwise if you leave out the expressive marks it's really just a five finger exercise with a couple of chords in the left hand. So I hope this was helpful to you and it gave you a little bit of insight into how to approach this piece. If you have any questions leave them in the comments. Thank you very much. See you soon.